Hey guys, Wally Renee here, and I'm super excited to be able to share this HEPA filter box design with you that you could construct at home or with your 3D printer. Basically, what we have is a tested design that um, allows you to, to use commonly available things at hardware stores and 3D printers to manufacture your own um, design. So basically, this is what we're looking at. Um, we have a kind of a box design that attaches to a mask and it could all be printed inexpensively with common PLA fused deposition modeling printers, which pretty much every high school and library has on planet Earth. Um, this is a little bit of the team led by Dr. Yost and, and it's just a fun team to be able to work with people smarter than myself. My contribution was um, not the box design itself, but this device, which basically snaps in a Roomba 700 filter, HEPA filter. So that filter is going to friction fit right in and basically <laughs> super easy to print and everything's ready to go. There are some assembly instructions at the end of this video. But if you're not having access to the Roomba filters, you're gonna be able to print your own assembly um, for a homemade HEPA filter. What you need to do is to understand a little bit about printing materials. So we have basically one piece mask design that can be printed at a PLA, which is a polylactic acid from plants, um, PETG, which is like a polyethylene terephthalate, and we have TPU, which is um, thermoplastic polyurethane. The key is to print these slow Okay, so you want to print these super slow at about 1.5 um, extrusion rate with uh, infill of 100%. Uh, TPU is probably the best material to print with because it's a little bit flexible, but they're super hard to print things out of TPU. So probably most people are going to do PLA. Now, we do have the option to do a split mouth design, which is essentially part A, which would be printed in uh, TPU, and part B, which would probably be printed in like a PLA type material. Um, and then you could combine those together using... Um, silicone adhesive or they're friction fit so they're really actually really tight but just to be safe you want to put an adhesive around there to make sure that it's airtight. I print mine usually out of one piece and this is um, the Sprint Ray Pro printer here printing out of denture material but you can also print it at surgical guide material and stuff like that. But once you print it it's really important to modify it to have a seal. So basically here we're using window tape for window seal material and we're just combining that on the inside of the mask so that you have a foam seal that kind of finalizes the customization to your face. You could also blow dry it and then bend it onto your face, but I'm scared to tell you to do that because you'll burn yourself. Um, you could use warm water, things like that. But then you attach any kind of elastomeric strap to the system to be able to hold it tight against your face. So it's super important to um, have these fit properly and you could always have them fit checked if you want. Um, but if you don't want to use the Roomba assembly and you want to make your own HEPA box assembly, it's really um, not super hard to do. I'm going to talk you through a little tutorial here, going like wicked fast here just because um, it's all sped up. But basically, you 3D print the STL file that we give you, and you're going to remove the supports, um, trim the components, and make sure you separate all the components and get all the supports out of there using pliers and um, X-Acto knife. <clears throat> remove the supports from the vent valve. And then kind of bevel back the tubes a little bit, make sure there's no rough edges. Same thing for the vent valve cap. Clean the openings, um, remove the valve um, supports, which are kind of a little bit tricky. You have to get in there with the little needle nose pliers and pop them out so that um, the vent valve is fully clean of supports in there. Okay, and then the next set thing that you need to do is make sure that you trim up, especially if you're printing with a raft if you decide not to print with a raft, you don't have as much cleanup to do. So I kind of recommend not printing with the raft. Um, just leads for more work. But we had a raft here, which would be like a worst case scenario. So you have to trim that away from the, that's the valve front. I mean, the assembly front, and this is the assembly cap. So you have four pieces there. So the next step is to now cut a HEPA filter. So these filters you get at Home Depot or anywhere, uh, Lowe's. You're going to mark a line one inch away from a bead line. Um, you'll see like little bead lines on these filters. These are like little hot glue lines and you can't really see it here because of the overexposure, but there's a little glue line right there. And so basically you measure one inch away from that and you're going to cut you a piece that's too tall, which is okay. It's going to be too wide and too tall. And then what you're going to do is you're going to roughly count 10 folds. So it gets you 10 folds. 
And then you're going to remove the glue from two folds on each side. There's the little glue bead that you're going to pop off. Okay, so you're just popping off that little glue bead. It peels right off. It kind of reminds me of like hot glue that they use maybe to hold those pleats together. Then you're going to fit it in the printed filter box assembly. And then you're going to measure a cut line for the top. Um, and then you're going to take uh, X-Acto or a scissor and you're going to slice that up, okay? <clears throat> it's really important here that you don't have it overextended past the lid because then it will compress and distort. So the next step is to use copious amounts of, of hot glue. Uh, be careful, don't burn yourself, but um, tons of hot glue because what you want to do is create a seal. And it's really important that you create an airtight seal around the filter. So don't be shy with the glue. You're going to put it all along the, the sidewalls as well. And remember, the, the tip is hot, and the, these are thermoplastics, so you could distort it if you're not careful. So here we're just um, sealing the edges. And um, once again, we're going to actually seal the other side. Take your time here. And now what we're going to do is put the lid on. Extra, extra hot glue. Make sure everything's sealed. There you go. And now we're going to assemble the lid. Okay, uh, the lines run perpendicular, kind of horizontally there. Just like that. Don't be shy with the glue. Okay, so basically set that aside. Uh, you could clean up the flash and stuff if you want to for aesthetic reasons. It, it functionally, it serves no purpose to clean up the excess glue flash. And what the next step is, we're gonna have to prepare a little rubber valve cap. <clears throat> and so you're gonna set that aside, get your rubber glove. You could use any kind of rubber glove. And you're, we're going to send a little template that you're gonna be able to cut the glove But in the meantime, uh, if you don't have a template, you could kind of measure to fit. This is actually the uh, most technique sensitive and critical part of this whole thing because the valve has to fit nice and flush and it can't be distorted because if the valve's distorted, then air is gonna leak in when uh, negative pressure occurs. A little dot of super glue and just set it right there. Make sure it's not pressing too far forward against the um, device and make, test, test it to make sure it, it's nice and easy. Now be careful here with the hot glue, just a little bit you're just gonna fit that cap and you should be ready to go. So here's what it looks like finally assembled. And we did have this fit tested, um, make sure that everything was sealed. That is it guys, uh, have fun with the files. Tell me how the Roomba uh, 700 works as well and let me know how these things are going.